first week, which was so important, we spoke about what happened to a Christian when he was born again, or when she was born again. What happened? And I mentioned four things. They're foundational things that happened to you when you were born again. One is this, you were cleansed by the blood of Christ. Not only your body, not only, but your conscience. Your conscience was totally cleansed. Secondly, your evil nature was cut off from you. The Bible calls it a circumcision that's done by Christ. That means you, you do not naturally sin now. Sin can only attack you from the outside, not from the source. The evil root has been cut off from you. Hallelujah. It's yeah. magnificent. The third thing is this. He's made your spirit alive. Your spirit can communicate with God and worship God in spirit and in truth. That is dynamic. And I said the first time we do it, we need to exercise our spirits. We exercise, every, we exercise this, don't we? We need to exercise our spirit. Fourthly, the Holy Spirit has been given to us. Hallelujah. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And uh, as we spoke last week, we spoke uh, no, two weeks ago, it's the Holy Spirit that leads us to the cross. It's the Holy Spirit that opens your eyes and gives you a revelation of what Christ did for you on the cross, which is superb. Let me say this to you. When Christ died, it was to fully equip you to live his way. I want to say this. He did not die for you to try and be righteous. He did not die for you in your human efforts to try and live Jesus' way. He didn't do that. He died so you could live by the Spirit. Do you understand? So you can live righteously. You, listen, it's, today is the day when trying is done for. If you want to live in the supernatural, God has to deal with the natural. Is that right? Jesus is so, it is so crucial to know this, that in the cross, he even dealt with human effort. So that's what I want to speak about today. The cross deals with striving. If you are a striver, the cross of Jesus Christ deals with striving and brings you into rest. Isn't that beautiful? So the subject I want, I want to talk about is I want to talk to you about the archetype striver. If there's one character in the Bible, it's just like me. It's a guy called Jacob. Jacob, I want to talk to you about Jacob. Jacob was the classic striver. So we're going we're gonna to read a couple of passages from the Bible about this um, lovely character called Jacob. There are some amazing stories, and I'm going to read you one of them. I'm just going to read you two passages firstly. Listen to this. It says, this, I, Jacob, uh, Jacob's father was Isaac, and his mother was Rebekah. So. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. The Lord answered the prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. Listen to this. This is amazing. The babies jostled inside of her. And she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. That's one story. Now, I want to turn to the next story. This is Jacob again. Listen to this. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he went over all his, all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone 
And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you've struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it's because I saw God face to face. And yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Great stories, aren't they? That's Jacob. Did, did you see a common theme there? Wrestling. I love wrestling. I used to wrestle. I loved wrestling with my kids when they were young. It, the, the theme is wrestling. The first one, Jacob wrestled with a man. The second one, he wrestled with God. The first one, striving was birthed in Jacob. The second one, striving died. The end of striving and labor, the second story. So I want to tell you four symptoms of a striver. I know this because here's the second classic striver. Four symptoms of a striver. A person who tries to do things with human effort rather than by the anointing of God. Then I want to show you four ways Christ deals with the striver. This is beautiful. God deals with the striver. So four, four symptoms of a striver. The first symptom is this. A striver is obsessed with human blessing rather than spiritual blessing. Jacob was obsessed with human blessing. I'll tell you why. He, he, was, he was, this is amazing. He was even striving in the womb before he was born. He was fighting his brother. And I said, why was he fighting with his brother? Why? And it was this reason. It was for birthright. A human blessing. The birthright was very important in those times. If you got born first, you got the most money. You got a double blessing. Secondly, you got status. Thirdly, you became head of the family when the father died. Birthright was very important. It was a human blessing. When Jacob, listen, when Jacob, they were fighting for the birthright. Jacob missed it by minutes. He missed his birthright by minutes. In fact, when Esau was born, Jacob was holding on. I've I got to figure he's trying to drag him back, you see. <laughs> he was trying to drag him back. So they called him supplanter, usurper. From that day, Jacob was totally intent on getting human blessing when God had spiritual blessing for him. But he spent years Seeking human blessing. Seeking the attention of man. Listen, listen, it's a tragic thing. When God has, has an anointing and a blessing for you and me, and we are more bothered about what people think about us. Where our, where our obsession is, how do I look? How, how good do I'm preaching? I want respect. I want to be honored. I want to be thought well of. I want to be wealthy. I want to have status. All these things are human blessings. You can go and seek for them. Jacob did. But God has something even far greater for you. Are you hearing this? He's got spiritual blessing for you. He's got, he's got honor in, in God's eyes, not in man's eyes. I can't tell you how much. I Listen, you, you have to have... You have to be open to listen to what God says to you. But when you do, suddenly I realized 
Am I preaching here for me? Or am I preaching to obey God and bless the people of God? It's a big thing. What is what are we obsessed with? If we're obsessed with what people think of us, we're a striver. Do you understand? That's some first symptoms of a striver. The second symptom of a striver is you try to fulfill God's purposes with your natural strength rather than by the Spirit. Do you understand? Jacob, when he was born, <coughs> when he was born, Rebecca, his mum, was told that Esau would serve Jacob. Even though Jacob was born second, he would be the one who ruled. Now, I, 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 I know what my, his mum must have been. His mum told Jacob, because Jacob was his mum's favourite. So she would have told Jacob, this is what was told me. From that day onwards, Jacob tried to fulfill the promise of God by his own strength. By his human effort, he tried. Now listen, listen. The, the, the one danger of knowing what God's purpose for you in life is this. That you try to achieve it by your own strength. I've got to fulfill God's purpose rather than just trusting and obeying God. The only thing you have to do is obey God. You don't have to work up something. You don't have to strive Listen, listen, God's plans for you are fantastic. Every one of you, there's not one person here that God's plans are small. Not one of you. You say, well, I I sit at the back row. That doesn't matter. God's plans for you are superb and great, but you can't fulfill them by your own efforts. Abraham tried to. Listen, it's a tragic story. Abraham was promised um, many, many children, like the sand of the seashore. But his wife was barren. So he thought, I better help God out here. I better help God out. So he went into Hagar, um, uh, Sarah's um, maid, slave. He slept with her and had children by her. And we're still suffering from that in the Middle East. That is a result of Abraham trying to do it by his own efforts rather than trusting in Christ. Are you with me? Whereas David, oh, I love King David. He, had the, he, he was told he was anointed to be king. And yet he had the opportunity of killing Saul. He could have done it by himself, but he didn't. He said, if God's promised me this, he will do it. I will not do it by my own strength. Folks, whatever God has said over you, whatever he said to us, listen, God has has promised me things about this city. Personal things that he's promised. I have tried in the past to achieve it by my natural strength. Rather than if trusting, if God tells me something, he would do it if I obey him. He won't just do it. But we're called to obey him, not strive and work for him. Are you with me, folks? Excuse me. The third thing is this. A striver will always, will nearly often resort to deceit to achieve its goal. Now, I explain this. Jacob did some incredible things. It, um, I call him the Del Boy of, um, the, Del Boy of the Bible. He, he willed and dealed. In, in fact, he tried to get his birthright by deceiving his brother. <laughs> he got Esau, I can't believe this, but he got Esau to sell his birthright for a bowl of soup. What is that about? He wheeled and dealed. He tried to um, get it over Esau. He resorted to all sorts of things. Um, he, 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 he even stole the blessing of Esau by deceit. 
by deceit. He, first of all, listen, first of all, his, his mum helped him in this. Um, she, she helped him quite a bit. She said, um, cook your dad's favorite meal. How, how many of us, how many of us have, have, have tried to get, get somewhere by impressing other people? Yeah, let's, let's get in with the leaders. If we're in with the leaders, I, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Let, let's, let's talk to the right people and then we get somewhere. Listen, you will never get anywhere by deception or buttering people up. You'll get somewhere by trusting in the Lord. Do you understand? He resorted to, he even dressed up like his brother. He even dressed up, got, got some hair on his arms and, and things. Just to, listen, you, you can deceive people. You can make out, I, I've done it. I, I, I've, been, I've, I've been living in disobedience and dance before the Lord. That's, that's, I've done that. It deceives people. People say, well, Mick Wolf is really good today. And God says, <laughs> you can't deceive God. You can deceive each other. Do you understand? Listen, God blesses those who are real. Not wear a mask. Not pretending you're righteous. God loves honesty and purity, truthfulness. Are you with me? That's what he honors. You notice this. Jacob, nearly everything Jacob did was the expense of Esau. You will never, never receive the blessing of God at the expense of somebody else. Somebody else's failure will never be your blessing. Never. Don't look for that. Look for other people's blessings. Other churches. Oh, right. how competitive we can be. Oh, our church is the best. Well, God's the judge of that. But if another church fails, it is, it is, it is no blessing to you. The greater blessing is where the whole church succeeds. Is that right? We will never succeed and earn, get God's blessing at the expense of other people. Third thing. The, the, fourth, the fourth symptom of a striver is that you think you have to earn God's blessing. You have, you, 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 you have to do something to impress God. When God's blessing is purely by grace. You know, from, from the day we were born, we've been taught that success is earned. I've, I've, I've told my kids, if you, if you study... If you study properly, you'll pass your exams. If you train in sport, you'll get the gold medal. Is that right? If you work hard at work, you will progress in your career. Those are, are, those are right things to tell your kids. I, am, I, I would do it again. But there... But, but it, that doesn't work in the kingdom of God. <laughs> because God's blessing purely comes by grace. You haven't got to do anything except to obey God to receive his blessing. It's this true, isn't it? It's by grace. But the times I have resorted to human effort to try and impress God when all he wants to do, I'm telling you, all he wants to do is pour his goodness upon you and make you fruitful. In Galatians 3, it says this, when you got born again, it was by the Spirit of God. In Galatians 3, he says this, he says, having started in the Spirit, why are you going back to resort to human effort? And I tell you, 
It is demonic. Because in Galatians 3, it says, he says, who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? And I'm, I'm saying this to, to, to folks here. Who has bewitched you? Are you trying to achieve God's purposes with human effort? When it's by the Spirit of God. It's purely by grace. And the work of Christ that you will achieve his purposes. Do, do, you, do you see that? Well, you have to let the light of God's, you have to let the light of his face shine on you and say, God, am I a striver? Um, I, I, I'll be quite honest with you. I have been a striver. But there is an answer. Because Jesus comes and wrestles with you. <laughs> And I want to show you four things. If you're a striver, I want to tell you there is a glorious answer because God wants to bring you into rest. The Bible calls it the rest of faith. There are four things that God would do to deal once and for all striving with human effort. He wants, do you know in John 6, 63, it says this, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Why is that? If you do anything for if you do anything by human effort for God, it counts nothing. Nothing. Only when you do the God's will, then the anointing of God comes. So four things, four ways in this second story that that Jacob finally had human effort dealt with by the cross. First thing is this. When you do that, if you say to God, you say, God, I, I want to live in the Spirit. I want you to deal with human effort in me once and for all. If you ask that, expect a crisis. <laughs> expect a crisis to happen in your life. Jesus is so intent on dealing with human effort that he will arrange things. Bryn Jones used to say, God is the ace manipulator. He will manipulate situations that bring a crisis in your life. Jacob's crisis was facing up to the brother who was threatening to kill him. And, he's, and the past caught up with Jacob. After about 15, 16 years, he thought, I've got to face Jacob. I've got to face Esau. He was scared for his life. He was scared for his life. Listen, listen. Don't run away from your crisis. Don't run away from it. Because your crisis can lead you to the greatest thing that can ever happen in your life. If you are facing a crisis right now, don't panic. Because God is doing something in your life that is very precious. The good thing that Jacob did was he wrestled with God. In his situation, he wrestled with God. And I tell you this, when, listen, listen, when, when, you, when you find yourself in a crisis, turn to God. Turn to God. Start to seek Him with all your heart. And He will begin to reveal things to you. Let me say this. Listen, when, when you face your crisis, um, I, I wish I could put it up um, uh, uh, diagrammatically, sorry, you've got all the four points up there. I didn't want that to come back. It's done now. Um, but uh, um, when, when uh, if you remember, um, when Joshua uh, was uh, leading his people into the promised land, he, had, he faced Jericho. Jericho was in the way. And he faced Jericho. It's, it's, it says it in the Bible, he faced Jericho. And, and that's where he met the Lord of hosts the, the, who, who came in. And uh, uh, because he faced Jericho, um, if, 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 if I could show you diagrammatically, it would be nice. But um, there was Jericho was the, the head of a valley, and Ai was the other end of the valley. Now, to take, to enter into the inheritance of Israel, he had to take Jericho and Ai. If he took Jericho... And, he, and you see, he, he says he took Ai as he took Jericho. Then suddenly the whole land opened up. He entered into his inheritance. If, if, 
so he, he was facing a crisis. He was facing a, 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 a fortified city. But, but God showed Jacob how to, uh, Joseph how to do it. Uh, Joshua. Okay, he muddled up. But when Joshua did it, his whole inheritance opened up. Now, the thing with you is if, if God has brought a crisis to you, and I, I, I believe if, if God gave me this word, it, there, there must be people facing a crisis right now. But if you face up to your crisis with God, it will lead you into inheritance. It will lead you into the blessing of God. So f- the first thing is face up to your crisis with God. The second thing is this. The second thing is, uh, in your crisis, God will often touch your natural strength. So um, Jacob was wrestling with God. And, and uh, it, God touched, dislocated Jacob's hip. Put it out of joint. Now, I, I don't know. I've had a dislocated finger. That was painful enough. But I can imagine if, you, if your hip's dislocated, there is no way you can wrestle. Is there? You, you, uh, he, his natural strength was totally done. Now, one of the things that happens when you face your crisis, and if it's, if it's a crisis God has brought you, human effort runs out. There's no answer. Some of you are facing situations you think, there's no answer for this. There's no answer. Sometimes hope is even demolished. You think hope is gone. There is no way I can get an answer. My natural strength is done. All you can do is hold on. All you can do is hold on. That's all Jacob did. That's all he did was he held on. Now, um, I, I'm saying this. God wants us to move in the supernatural, doesn't he? Sometimes it's, I, I have to say, it is a very painful lesson. Because we think We can sort things out the way we used to sort them out. Jacob thought, well, I'll wrestle with God like I did with Esau. It doesn't work. You think, oh, my financial situation. I I know I'll go to the banks or I'll I'll look for credit or I'll get a loan or or I'll, I'll find extra work or whatever it is. Don't always resort to human effort. Do you understand? God sometimes closes the door there where human effort and striving is pointless. All you can do is put your trust in God himself. So Jacob, he lost his natural strength. And, and if, 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 if you feel, I've, I've come to the end, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Praise God, you're there. You're there. Don't say, oh, this is terrible. This, this is God's purpose in your life. And it is very painful, I've got to say. But it's bringing you to the place of Christ. From that time, Jacob held on to God. As he held on. Now, now listen, in, in my life, I have in, in, in a number of crises... I have held on to God's word. I have held on to God's word. And it's good to hold on to God's word. But in these last few months, God's told me to hold on to the finished work of Christ. You, when you do that, you move into a different level. I am telling you, the cross is everything. He's achieved everything. Hold on to that work. Put your trust totally in what Christ has achieved for you. It will result in spiritual blessing. It is true. I I tell you, Christ didn't die just to think of him every occasional time. 
The death of Christ is for you to live successfully every day. Every day I'm learning to trust that Christ has achieved it. And I can live in the sheer glory of it by trusting in Him. Wow! I, I, I tell you, I, I don't think I have touched the extent of what Christ has won for us. It's for us. It's glorious. It's on, listen, when you reach that place, you enter into rest. Let me read you this. There's loads of scriptures I've missed out. I don't know what, I've, I get so excited. And I get, let me read you, Hebrews 4, listen to this. Hebrews 4. It says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later of another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work. Anyone who enters into Christ's work rests, in other words, striving finishes. I, I tell you this, when striving finishes, who gets the glory? God gets the glory. When you strive, all you are is looking for God, for your, for your glory. When you enter rest, you enter, you, you, you finish with striving. It's through the work of Christ. There were, there's another common theme between those two stories. The other theme is, is a giving of a name. When Jacob strove at the beginning, he was called Striver Jacob. When he wrestled with God, God renamed him, renamed him Israel. Do you know, in, um, in, in your Bible, it often says uh, he struggled with God. But um, I, I, I prefer Strong's definition. He will rule as God. He will rule as God. That's, that's what Jacob was renamed. No longer a striver. Now a ruler with God. Hallelujah, eh? From that day on, he limped. Once the cross has touched your human strength, you will forever limp. You will forever limp. Because you realize, I, I, once, once God's touched you like this, once the cross has touched you there, you think, I, I, I'll, I'll be really honest, if, if, if God doesn't turn up now, while I'm speaking, I'm, sink, I'm sunk. I'm absolutely sunk. It's, it's when God brings you to a place of total dependence on, on this magnificent Christ who gave his life for you. I, I, in my heart, I believe this. I believe... Do you know, I, I, I said uh, it, a while back, I asked God for the gift of discernment. And I, th I thought, uh, I, I said, God, I, I want to be more discerning. And in my heart, I thought, well, God would show me uh, more of the demonic, if there's demonic going on or whether the Spirit of God. But he hasn't shown me that. He's shown me where people are operating in the spirit of God or whether they're trying to do it in their own strength. And as I, I've, I've looked around, I see it everywhere. I, I, I see it all the time. I've never said anything. I've just prayed. I've never said anything to anybody. But I see it everywhere. I see Christians try and achieve God's mighty purposes by effort, by trying to work things up. You'll never achieve it. 
by striving or working things out. You, you achieve it by trusting in this beautiful work of Jesus that he achieved on the cross. And you just do what he says. And I, t- I tell you, um, God, God's going to bring us into that. If, if you want that. I want it more and more. It's, it's not an easy journey. But it's a wonderful journey. It's a wonderful journey. And I, I, I say this prophetically right now. God is, is bringing individuals here into rest. He's bringing you into rest. There's going to be a breaking of natural strength and ability. Try and achieve things by yourself. You can't do it. I have lived for years and years failing until God's opened my eyes to this magnificent, magnificent truth that I only have to trust in Christ's work. Amen. Amen.